some tubes are warming up. This is a special live broadcast right here on Georgia Radio. Radio, 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 radio. This is great. I want to welcome you uh, to here to Georgia Radio and to our Tuesday night Georgia Folk and Farm Life Radio Show. I'm here with Matt Jolly, my old friend Matt. It's his radio uh, shindig, and, and uh, <laughs> that's a good name for it. Hey, <laughs> wait, glad, glad to yeah. glad to be here with you tonight. This is the we we'll uh, making up names for a lot of things as we go tonight. Well, when we met. I mean, we had a good time this morning too. We got together for a little while, and uh, it was all fun. Hey, you know, uh, this is the first really. This is the first live live show on uh, GeorgiaRadio.com. So. Thanks for kicking it off. Well, I want to welcome everybody that's listening, and we uh, do want to know that uh, you can call in and uh, and talk to us. Uh, yeah, call in and let us know it's working. <laughs> that yeah. would be great if you could let us know it's working, <laughs> right? Yeah. You want to give out that number? Sure, I'll give it out. It's uh, 678, so 678-390-8633, and that's the number to call. So 678 678- Three nine zero eight six three three, and my uh, my wife just wrote in and said she's listening. So I know somebody's listening. Well, great. Hey, you know uh, you know who else is listening tonight? Let's see. I, I just heard a knock. You know who that is, Wade? You want to? Let's see who it is. Hello, darling. Oh, there it oh, is. It's your uh, it's Hello, your buddy. Darling. Yep. Nice to see you. It's been a long time. Please don't start that. Yeah, I'm going to sing here. See, when I hear I love Conway so good. You do not. I just bust, they say bust out singing. You just, you can't stand Conway, Twitty. Now it's that's a natural the, reaction, Matt. It's a natural. Everybody knows, knows I love Conway. Well, and when, as soon as I hear him sing, I start singing too. You know? That's open. I think that's open for debate, but but uh, yeah. we'll we'll see. Hey, let's go to the phone here. I don't. I hope this isn't Conway Twitty, but uh, let's see who this is. You're live on the air tonight. Hello, good evening. Hey, this is Wade's sister, and I've stayed up past my bedtime to hear this, so it better be good. Well, I and we make any apologies <laughs> right now on on the phone. You're, now you're you're the sister that that got all the smarts. Is yeah, that, that's the one, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. That, I'm, I'm the one. Yeah, right. My right. goodness. Well, you're better than Conway <laughs> Twitty calling funny. in. No, that's great. Oh, she's better. <laughs> she's almost as good a musician as Conway Tweedy. Yeah, where yeah. where did you you yeah, went to well. music school? Is that what they call it? Wait, I don't. Well, a conservatory. Well, yeah, I have a master's in music. I, no, I have a master's in music, and and I'm the I've been playing music for a long, long time. We won't talk about that. But hey, I didn't call to talk about myself. I just wish you the best with this show, and I'll hang up and let some other people call or let you get on with your content. We're just glad it's, it's great working. Great to talk with you both. Thank you. Yep, yeah, me too. <laughs> All Thanks, right. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Wade. Well, how Bye. about that, Wade? Uh, the inaugural <laughs> caller. There you go. Yes. Your, I get a fan because it can be only downhill from here, you know. <laughs> your sister called it. What? I, I looked at the site the other day, and I, I, I'm just. I think I'm like so many other people when I say thanks for doing what you're doing on there because that's a it's a labor of love. I mean, you don't. It, it really is a labor of love on there. It, it is. You got the love part, but you know, Matt. Honestly, I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't admit this, but it's not a lot of labor. I it, I, I don't spend that much as much, nearly as much time uh, doing this as people think. Uh, oh, and I don't it, buy it, that for a minute. It, but it, you go right ahead and tell us that, but I don't believe it for a minute. See, I don't want my boss to think that that's you know uh, I, I have to work. You know, right. Right. Let me give out the number again tonight. Uh, 678-390-8633. You, too, can call in uh, to the Georgia Folk and Farm Life Radio Show. 678-390-8633. We're talking cornbread recipes in the morning uh, on on Neighbor to Neighbor. That's that happens tomorrow morning uh, at uh, 10 a.m. right here on Georgia Radio. And I know cornbread is a hotly. Uh, you know, it, it's a hot subject, a hotly debated topic on Georgia Folk and Farm Life. But we're coming into the holidays here, and I need some help, Wade, with cornbread recipes. So, well, well Matt, I'll just tell you, uh, uh, cornbread to a, a Georgian, and a, you know, diehard uh, Southerner, is not, you know, like Midwestern and Yankee cornbread. Uh, what they call cornbread is not really off cornbread, you know. 
but they want to make cornbread like cake, you know, put a lot of sugar in it and eggs and milk, hmm. you know, and it's cornmeal cake. That's not cornbread. Cornbread <laughs> is salty or, and it's, and, and the best is fried. I can already, I can already hear everybody right now just getting ready to call in. But uh, so, yeah. so look, we're going to get into sugar grits. We won't talk grits tonight at all. And don't, and, and okay. yeah, because, uh, yeah. all right. But so cornbread, cornbread should be savory, not sweet. Okay. A little salty, a little good yeah. and uh, savory. Well, we'll talk about that. Okay. And if you want to call in and share your cornbread recipes tonight, that's no, okay too. So your sister already called in. That was nice. I don't know if Harvey's listening. Harvey Williams. We love Harvey, and Harvey's going. We hope to make Harvey a part, a part and parcel of this show in the future, tonight. So our inaugural run is also a test run. You know, we 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 will uh, feel our way and find our way into how to how to do this show. Sure. And uh, we hope that Harvey will be a part of it because we love Harvey. I we think do. everybody loves. Harvey. We do. Let's see. We got a caller right now. Let's see who this is. Good evening. You're on uh, the Georgia Folk and Farm Life Radio Show. Who's this? Hello, Wade. Susan Exley in Effingham County. Susan, as soon as I heard your voice. Hey, Susan. Hello there. Tell us about your website. Oh, Georgia, Georgia Folk and Farm. Farm. Well, mo I think most of it, but it is, uh, you know, it is uh, on Facebook, and it's Georgia Folk and Farm Line. And had I known it was going to be uh, as successful, I would have named it something shorter. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> It, it does have a unique ring to it if you say it yeah, real fast. People get it wrong. They call it that Georgia farm and folk thing or the Georgia folks and farm <laughs> people life. And I'm like, they confuse me sometimes. But yes, it's Georgia folk and farm life. And, and it's not just Georgia. It's, um, I did at one time after we got the, we have over 80,000 members now. And we got about 10,000 members. And I thought we were big time. And I discussed taking Georgia off and just making it folk and farm life or southern folk and, farm. and we had a mutiny and people were out in my house with pitchforks and torches at night and you know and uh, like in the old black and white horror movies so I, I didn't mention taking the Georgia name off of it again but it's for everybody it, as long as you like uh, rural life and, and uh, it's, it's of interest on Georgia folk and farm life and we love it and we have members all over the world and all over the country Hey, Susan, it's Matt Jolly. I have a question for you. We were, we were talking uh, earlier tonight about, about cornbread. Are you a savory cornbread type or are you a, a sweet cornbread type? Savory. The, the only way, right? You're not even going to get into it here tonight. <laughs> that's, no. that's smart. It's the only no way to get it. No jiffy cornbread. No jiffy cornbread. Now, no, see, well, that's, that's my go-to. Matt, Susan is a descendant of the Effingham County uh, German uh Salzburgers. Salzburgers. And uh, they have different cooking, but they've been, they they came over long enough ago to uh, acclimate, and they're like, almost like real Georgians now and have been for 300 years. <laughs> well, I think that's great. Susan, thanks for, for calling in tonight, and I hope you call in tomorrow and, uh, and share a little holiday stuff with us on Neighbor to Neighbor, if you would, because... I, I, have, right. I got well, a house full coming, and, to, and we need help. So please call in in the morning, too, and, and share All some right. more with us. Congratulations on your first talk show. Thank you. Let's you and I get into this, because we talked about getting into it earlier today, about uh, about some of the top things that are on the site right now on Georgia Folk and Farm Life, because it's been kind of a surprising a surprising season on there with people and what they're interested in right now. What, do you, what are you seeing on the trends? Well, you know something, and I'm going to touch on something, that, and it's a bit controversial, and you wouldn't think prayer request, but uh, we, we've we had people threaten to leave George Floyd Farm Life because we have so many prayer requests. And COVID, uh, we're a COVID-free zone. We don't do posts about COVID, but we allow COVID prayer requests. And the prayer requests mushroomed during the worst of COVID, and they're right. tapering off now. And I just want to ask everybody, those of you that, that uh, say, well, we have too many prayer requests, I don't think that's possible. Uh, we've had people ask us to start a new site like we did GF and FL recipes to, to sideline them, but we're not going to do that. But anyway, other than the and prayer requests are a big part of what Georgia Folk and Farm Life has become. And uh, we just can't, this is, you know, being where we are and who we are, we can't restrict that. I'm not going to. So, But we have, we have a lot of things. We've got new babies pictures and and uh, we have people who uh take photographs we've got some great photographers on here to share their photographs uh we've got people sketch do some sketches uh 
we have people that share their talents, their cooking. Uh, I see here um, Beth the Low Chew Bank. She's got uh, thing about dumplings <laughs> and peas. And you know, I need to go read that because I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna need that here in a few weeks. But dumplings and peas, sweet peas and dumplings, and that's a good thing. But it's but not all all Southerners like it. So you know, we we I'm a chicken and dumpling guy. And there you go. We and Matt, we can get into dumplings. And there's you know, like there's round earth and flat earth people. Well, here we go. Flat dumpling <laughs> and round dumpling people. <laughs> round dumpling people. Huh? See, I didn't and, even. And I've never heard of them. They're, they're right. You know, you you got people that my mom and my grandmother they rolled out, you know, they rolling pin and they they were flour covered and and uh, they rolled dumplings out and they were th paper thin and great. And then others made ball, you know, and yeah. and they're you know, just robs of dough and that's fine if that's what you were raised on that hard. I mean, on that kind of thing. But um, yeah, it we as Georgians and Southerners we can argue about anything, and we do grits, cornbread, dumplings. Um, it don't matter. We we can we can, uh, but we still love one another in the end. I get um, that, and I, I think that's what's so great about uh, living down in the South. And in, in my opinion, is you know you can you can say what you will, but if you're not from here and you start talking bad about it, look out because everybody's gonna just dogpile right on top. I, I, food and prayer, I, I think it's it's synonymous, right? Yeah, with, with the and, South, and we do and both. It, you know, we we pray before yeah. we eat, so yeah. Mm -hmm. I met a I met a young guy this weekend. I was down in Florida, you know, doing a show down there, and I met a guy. Uh, well, his mo I met this child's mother, and the mother walks up to me. She was singing the national anthem at the event, and I bring this up because I know there's a lot of people listening tonight. And if uh, if you would be so inclined to pray for for Alex, he's 10 years old, uh, lives down in Florida, and he has a Facebook group called Iron Man Alex Fights Brain Cancer. And he's trying to raise over 10,000 toys. He's doing a toy drive this year, and he's trying to raise 10,000 toys uh, to give away to, uh, to needy kids who don't have a Christmas. And I just, I, I was so moved by this. I asked his mother, I said, well, you know, how's he doing? And she was pretty, you know, forthright with me uh, that uh, it's been about 18 months and the treatment is, it, 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 she, they need prayer. Let's just leave it at that. They need prayer. He's lost about, right. you know, 80% of his vision. And the, the kid is a fighter. And you've never met someone that's just so, so excited and happy about, about life. Um, not the situation, but just, I, I was just really moved by meeting him. And I think that, uh, I think that's great. I think that's great what you're doing. But if, you're, if you want to go follow him, it's uh, Iron Man Alex fights brain cancer. They're on Facebook, 10 years old and uh, trying to raise 10,000 toys. He was on the CBS Evening News uh, a while back with Lester Holt, and he had him on, and they raised 6,000 toys last year. So this year he's trying to, yeah, he's trying to do it. But I, I love that kind of stuff on Georgia Folk. I do, London. too. Uh, I think most of us enjoy human interest. Uh, that's, we used to, I used to love uh, Charles Carroll on the road and, and all the things that, you know, like Paul Harvey, and they would tell us about people like that. Now, the internet, of course, has made it where we can be made aware of a lot more things, but uh, we've always enjoyed getting to know interesting people, people that were doing things worth doing, and uh, there's, there's not enough of that, Matt, is there? No, I agree. I agree there's not. Would you read us something tonight that you've been working on? Because I think everybody loves hearing your stories. And I know that was well, something we talked about because I think it's it's fun when you start poking around on the keyboard and, and you've let me let me see what I've written lately that uh, okay, it's called the cookbook and I wrote this on June twenty seventh of this year. Burdell was busy in the kitchen with cooking supper. It was cool and a good day for the cooking of a special supper, it being their 55th anniversary. It was the time of year she loved. Leaves bore color, the heat of summer had abated, and the Georgia sun had become friend rather than foe. She loved cooking and loved that she had a reputation for being the best in the county. Church dinners, Sunday feasts, and community or family gatherings were arenas for her culinary legend to be burnished. She wore an old dress, one she had made on the old new home treadle machine that had been her Aunt Bell's and had replaced the worn out singer that her Granny Lee had given them when they'd married. She liked sewing and they could afford for her to buy more store-bought clothes than she did, but like all the women in, her, in the Lee family, she was good at sewing and enjoyed it. She liked sewing as well as she did cooking, the way she always had. 
Her apron kept her dress clean, but before Harville came in for supper, she would take off the apron and change into a fresh frock. It was little things like that that kept him smiling at her for lo these many years. She remarked to herself of how they had kept, how she had kept, a, both had kept a good figure over the years, neither getting too fat nor too lean. Sort of like her cooking, it was just right. In the years after it was just the two of them, she learned quick enough about how much to cook for just them, rather than the huge meals it had taken to feed them all when the children were there. She had bought special for this supper, and it peeled, sliced, chopped, boiled, baked, and sauteed, poked, prodded, and rolled. Wardell had not been able to get a couple of the seasonings called for, but had made do with what she had gotten at the A&P. It was as good as it smelled, she was, if it was as good as it smelled. She was in like Flynn, and her face turned red as she recalled the exact meaning of that old saying and giggled a bit, just like just a bit, as she was a good Baptist girl. <laughs> Jackie Johnson had done her hair that morning in her little shop, added a bit of Miss Clairol, and she was careful of it to keep it nice for the evening. She never wore perfume. Harville didn't like it much, but if she had, he would never say anything about it, as he was kind and would not hurt her feelings about such things. He had told her early on in that that he loved her smell, and that was all the perfume she needed. Old Chanel over in France couldn't bottle that, he said. Burdell opened a little bottle of McCormick's tarragon and sniffed it. She had never used tarragon, but it was called for, and they had it, so she got it. It was all cooking along, and she sat down to rest for a spell after looking again out the window down to Harville's shop and saw he was still working. Harville was turning a shaft on his small lathe with Bo Pete Allen's combine and checked it with his favorite old micrometer and saw that it was within three thousandths of an inch and a quarter that it had to be. He held a strip of emery cloth to it after stepping up the belt a little bit to a higher speed and polished it. He removed it from the chuck, took it over to the milling machine to bore and cap the hole for the set screw. He finished it, wrapped it in wax paper as it was his habit with such parts, and set it aside for Bo Pete to come by and get in the morning. He could have left it lying out or wrapped it in an old shop rag. No one else added little touches to their work like wrapping the neatly in wax paper, but he knew it added to his legend as the best machinist in the county. Small things added up in folks' minds, and he was mindful of the little things. He brushed the shavings from the table of his old Bridgeport milling machine and swept around the floor under the lathe, added that those to the dustpan and put it all in the barrel he kept for that. He took the tap from the quill of the milling machine and put it in the slot made for it in the wooden tray he had made for years before to keep them all in good order. He cut the main breaker and locked up, and old Parky followed right at his heels, tails wagging as always, as he headed to the house. Carl thought how he was glad he had no tails. He would tire of wagging it and grin silently at his silly thought. And he knew Burdell would find that funny, too, and it came to him that it was their anniversary and she would be cooking special tonight, and he could not wait as he'd been busy all day, and she had been in town and not cooked dinner. He had had some crackers and vine crackers, uh, vine sauce and crackers, and she did not fix dinner on Thursdays. He had eat light since he knew she would be put on the doll for supper, it being their anniversary and all. He came inside and stuck his head of wavy gold red hair in through the open kitchen door and asked if he had time to shower before supper. And she smiled at him and said he did. As he turned, turned to go to their room, he said, smells so good. Burdell asked if he meant her or the food, and he said, both just about the same. And she threw a dish rag at him, and he disappeared down the hall, and they both left. Harville showered and put on his best golf clothes. He called him that as a joke. Harville never played golf, not once. As he walked in the living room, she stuck her head in and told him how nice he looked, and he said, I look like an undertaker's policy man, and they both <laughs> laughed again. Burdell remembered how he looked as they ate the first supper she ever made for him 55 years ago tonight, pork chop, black-eyed peas, mashed potatoes, and biscuits, and how he had eaten like a sawmill hand, looking handsomer than any sawmill hand she ever knew. She chirped, supper's ready, and he was quick on her heels. He pulled out her chair and sat down, and she asked him to reach over and get the bottle of blackberry wine from the ice bucket on the sideboard. Harville was impressed. It was a sweet tea tonight, but wine indeed, and hoped it pretended good things to come. She said it was the last of the blackberry wine old Sudie Anderson made before she died five years ago. He loved blackberry wine and its romantic effect. Quote, it never failed. He looked at the food, and for the first time in 55 years, he recognized none of it. <laughs> she said, I hope you like it. I got the recipes out of that cookbook that Imogene brought back and gave me for Christmas that year they went on that trip to Niagara Falls. He looked at the food and at her and bowed his head to say the blessing, and they ate in silence. Like a good boy, he cleaned his plate, and when offered seconds, he said he'd had enough. He sat for another minute and asked, where's that cookbook? 
She looked surprised that he, Harville Watson, would want to read a cookbook, but answered, it's in the drawer with the hot pads. Harville walked over and pulled the drawer out, saw the book and picked it up, but did not open it. He walked to the back door, did open it, and walked out onto the porch. He drew back, wound up like in his baseball days, and pitched the cookbook as far as any husband ever threw a cookbook, and it landed dead center of his hog pen. The shows had all looked up with expected anticipation, as Harville had a good arm yet, and had tossed things for them to eat from the porch before. He had a mild flashback to his days in Korea, and with the looks of the faces of the, on the faces of his pigs, he thought somebody ought to holler, INCOMING! As it landed, the pigs retreated with squeals and jostling, only to try to be the first to get to it as it was expected to be a good thing to eat as usual. The Yankee cookbook stopped them dead in their roof track, hoof tracks, and the whole little swine herd of Duroc sniffed, turned up their snouts, and looked at Harville like a four-year-old at a spoonful of casserole. He walked back inside and asked Burdell if they had any pie, to which she replied meekly, Yes, peach, and I'll get it for you. Harville said, No, I'll get it. You've done enough. It was the worst thing he had ever said to her, and she wanted to cry. He sat down with his big piece of pie and started to eat, but put the first fork full to her lips and said, Here. She swallowed it like a toddler after a spanking, half about to blubber some more and half wanting to say how good it was. He fed her as they ate it together. As he wiped her mouth, he said, Damn Niagara Falls. They laughed together, and she said, let me put up the food and clean up. And Harwell said, leave it. It won't hurt a bit for it to stay out all night, and I'll help you with it in the morning. I got to feed the hogs in anyhow. <laughs> they laughed until she cried some more, and he whispered, come on, let's go to bed and bring the wine. <laughs> I like the it. End. The like end. That. I like it. Let's uh, uh, let's go to the phone here. We have a caller. Maybe maybe it's Harvey. Yeah. You never know. Let's see. Who's, who's calling tonight? This is Nick. Not Harvey. It's not Harvey. All right. Well, go go right yeah. ahead, Cole. We can, we can sort of hear you. Oh, uh, well, I used to drive truck with Wade. Hey, so I wanted to be a lady. Hey, Wade, how you doing? I'm, well, I remember a lot. I remember some things we might not can talk about on here, but go ahead. Yeah, there's some things we might not want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to All right, that broke up. Yeah, you know, again. breaking up just a bit. Try again. Yeah, I wonder if you remember the story you told me one time about the the neighbors that owned the drive-in theater bringing the muskie yeah, home in the truck. <laughs> yeah, and the truck of the car. <laughs> he told the trooper that pulled him over not to open it. He said, you don't, he said, open that trunk. He said, you don't want to open that trunk. He said, open the trunk. Yeah. And it was a mean monkey in there, and he opened it. And a monkey? Had, yeah, a monkey. <laughs> this monkey got passed around. Uh, Nick, you still there on there? Is Nick, is I, think, I think we lost him, but go okay. go right ahead. Yeah. That was Nick Branson, an old friend of mine, a great guy. He and his wife, uh, Cindy Branson, are great group members and old friends of mine. And I, and, uh, but, yeah, they, uh, my neighbor, this was back years ago. They had This monkey was a mean monkey, and he got passed around. Bless his heart. He had a troubled life. He had a, <laughs> he had a hard life. And The monkey did. The monkey did, and he, you know, people would say, here, you want a monkey? And this, hey, you know, he said, sure, he's, he's a, it's a nice monkey, but he wasn't a nice little monkey. He was an evil, wicked monkey. But like I say, he had been a, he had, he had, had a tough <laughs> life. And, and they would pass him off to the next person, and then, uh, you know, he, he met many great adventures, and finally, uh, a, Preacher in Twin City that ran a station there on the corner that we will name, go and name. Uh, finally, um, that was where he ended his days. Uh, the monkey. Rather quickly. Today. <laughs> yeah. I won't go into that. But, yeah, that was, a, that was a good story about the trooper that kept saying, open the trunk and show me what's in there. And the guy was telling you, you really don't want me to open this trunk. Open the trunk. <laughs> open you the really trunk. don't want me to open the trunk. And they did. And, yeah, it didn't go well. You had a squirrel for a while. Yeah, yeah, I had a, I had a squirrel. It was a crippled squirrel. It was a, a friend of mine had this squirrel that he rescued and raised, and then, you know, they and it had went, a baby. but it went lame, right? Well, yeah, they they had a baby and and a uh, new baby, and they need to get rid of the squirrel. I went over to get it, and the squirrel just fell like off of the, <laughs> its child's shoulder, like two feet to the ground, and broke its leg. Right, and. So then I took it home, and, and I uh, I won't say I nursed it back to health. I ignored it until it, you know, it didn't die miraculously. It was, And I did ask people on Georgia Folk and Farm like to pray for the squirrel, and it was. 
a miracle. This this <laughs> this squirrel made a miraculous recovery, and through no no effort of mine, you know, I didn't really. I right. fed, the, fed and watered the squirrels like, okay, I, you know, God bless you, squirrel. Uh, you know, do you know do well, and the squirrel did, and it had a good life until. You know, I said, well, I need to let this, everybody kept, you don't need to keep that squirrel pin up. Well, I decided to let it, let it out. And it went <clears throat> real well till the hawk caught it. Yeah. It, could, it was just couldn't run that And that leg still, you know, it made, so anyway, yeah, the squirrel. <laughs> you, squirrel <was> gone. <laughs> well, between, I have a cage if anybody wants to buy a squirrel cage. I've yeah. Got a, you have a nice you know, squirrel cage. I saw it today yes, out there. Yes. That's yes. a nice squirrel cage. And uh, you remember squirrel nut zipper candy? Yeah, not the band, but the candy. Yeah, the, yeah, the, this was yeah, the candy, and uh, yeah, I, I found some of those a while back, and uh, they they're good. I like, and um, they aren't we got Gerald Mallard here? Uh, he posted a, this a few days ago. Do y'all remember using hand signals while driving? Not sure if they are even legal now, but do you remember hand yeah, signals? Yeah, I use them all the time. You know, <laughs> I've had. Listen, I still got vehicles that I that I is uh, needed. You know that I it's required. If I you know I, I have to put my arm out the window right. and give a hand. Signal. Well, yeah, riding still, the tractor down the road, you've got. I mean, I, on the eight in, I have to you know hold my hand up high to go right and. You know, down to stop all that stuff. You know, you got down yeah. to down down to the left is left is slow down or left turn, and, right? And and up just to the right, and it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We used to do those, and uh, you don't see that much anymore. People run over you now when you're giving your hand signal, and uh, you will die illegally. I mean, you'll be giving the hand the hand signal right as they you know take you out. Let's take this caller here and see uh, see who's on the air with us uh, tonight. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey there. Uh, fellas, this is Eric Boxley. Hey, Eric. I, I didn't want to wait. Hey, man, didn't want you to have to sing again, so uh, Thank you. I thought I'd call in. Nobody, no, nobody was calling in, so I was like, well, we just don't need to sing anymore. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, I, didn't catch, I didn't catch the first part of your show. I'm, just, I'm on my way in and uh, caught the second half, I guess, so. Enjoyed it so far. Well, glad to have you, Eric. Uh, you, I tell you what, uh, it's hard to nail you down. You're always somewhere, somewhere different, and uh, headed somewhere else. Uh, <laughs> that's a that traveling man, is Eric Moxley, man. Where are you listening to us I, at tonight? I'm, at, I'm over uh, just uh, east of Dublin. I've been down to Moultrie and then to Macon, and headed back towards the uh, Hickson area. And oh, you uh, went to Moultrie? Did somewhere. you go to the expo? <laughs> No, I, I went to pick up loader equipment. Okay. And, uh, geared, geared up to uh, mo uh, back to bacon and headed, headed to the house and just tuned into your show and thought I'd give you a call in and uh, just speak to you fellas. So looking forward to to another show later on and keep well, up the good work, I guess. <laughs> Thanks for calling well, in thank tonight, you, Eric. Eric. Yeah. Great, great group member, and we appreciate you so I, much. Eddie. Yeah, be, be safe out there tonight, yeah, Eric. Eric. We do appreciate. I will do it. Y'all take care. All right. Thanks, Eric. Have a great night. Now, well, that's the way it works, and I, I hope people can start listening. You know, the great thing about like Eric is you can listen in your car, and and it's easy to do. You download that app. Uh, there is another app. If you've if if people are listening tonight and they are uh, somewhat tech savvy with their car and they have a you know if they use Apple CarPlay, uh, I use that all the time. There's a great app called My Tuner Radio. My Tuner Radio. And you can download that, and we're on there. And that works with Apple CarPlay. Yeah. You might run off the road with it, or that Live 365 app that's up there. Well, I've got the Live 365 and play through yeah. my Bluetooth. And, of course, we built the website so you can just listen right off the website. I mean, it's designed uh, for a mobile phone. So it looks really nice on a mobile phone. You just pull it up and you push that play button and away it goes. And uh, and we'll be on tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Or I will at least uh, with. Uh, but Georgia Radio is 24-7. Right? Georgia Radio is 24-7. Absolutely. 24-7. Talk about the today. music, that, uh, the, 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 the programming. Sure. Well, it's, it's all country and it's uh, a lot of vintage country, a lot of old stuff and uh, a lot of stuff from the from the 90s because uh, there's a lot of folks uh, that, sure. that like that. You know the the seventies, eighties, and nineties, uh, but we go way back. Um, we we have some some real old stuff on there every once in a while that you'll hear, um, and we'll play whatever you want to hear. So if you've got something, 
uh, sign up for the newsletter there on Georgia Radio. If you go to georgiaradio.com and you sign up for our newsletter, there's an email address there. We'll send, you can plug in, I'm sorry, you can plug in your email address and then I'll email you the schedule for that week in our newsletter. And we can write back and forth and you can say, hey, I want to hear more of this or less of that or whatever. And we can we can do it. It's that easy. Well, this is, Matt, this is your station for people. You, we All the time we hear people lamenting that country music is no longer country music. So if they want to hear uh, the country music when country was when country was great, uh, we can play it. We have it all. Georgia radio is where it make country music great again. Well, yeah, and, and hopefully we're going to make Georgia News uh, a big thing. Right now we feature USA Radio News while we're standing up. If you're a newsman and you want a job, call me. We're, we'd like to partner with some local newspapers. We want to have uh, everything Georgia on this station and hopefully start getting it on the air as well so you can tune in on your AM or FM dial. But right now the easiest way for us to go statewide uh, is the way we're doing uh, they're online. So I know it's it's new technology, but it's uh, it's great. You can listen in four. I mean, it's just it's remarkable. 128 kilobit stream. Uh, so it's way better well, than CD quality. Yes. Yeah. Well, and Matt, when we get enough listeners here on this show, we'll be looking at some uh, partners to sponsor uh, That's right. us and uh, try to uh, yeah, really make a go of it. I mean, and then we've got other projects that you, you have discussed and we've talked about. And uh, if you'll people, if you'll support us, we can grow, <clears throat> help us grow Georgia Radio and um, Georgia Folk and Farm Life uh, That's right. on the radio and We're other projects. Have... Matt, Matt's got some great, great ideas and, and he's uh, he's making things happen and I'm glad to be a part of hey, it. Thanks, and uh, it, it's, it's a pleasure. It really is. Well, listen, we're going we're gonna to knock it off tonight, and uh, we're going to be back next week, and hopefully everybody will call in. And I hope we can have Harvey on next week. Yes. Yeah, but, uh, but sign up for the newsletter at Georgia Radio. If you go to georgiaradio.com, go down there to the bottom, there's, or anywhere, really, there's a, there's a way to get on there, and you can have a, a taste of the newsletter. I think I know this caller. Let's uh, take one last caller here, Wade, before we're out of time. Good evening. You're on the air. We didn't even Hello. talk. We didn't even talk about donuts tonight. I took away <laughs> donuts earlier today. And I was cautious not to mention those donuts. Yeah, I think this is my wife. It is. Are you are you listening Good tonight? Show. Yeah. We're, I am listening. Yeah, we're going out to get the get some dinner, but had a request. Okay. Cruise by Florida Georgia Line. Cruise by Florida Georgia Line. We might have that. I'll look and see. All right. Awesome. Love you. Have a All safe right, trip. Listening. All right. Be well. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> All Bye. right. All right. Well, there you go. My wife called in. How about the my wife and your sister? The That's start good. and the finish. She's out of town yeah. tonight. You know how that goes. I'm glad. I'm glad you're listening tonight. Thanks for uh, thanks for calling in tonight, sweetheart. Uh, cruise by Florida Georgia Line. I'm going to punch that in, and we're going to get out of here. And hopefully that'll come up here in just a bit. Wade, it's been fun. Same here. Well, Enjoyed it, Matt. You need, to, you, need to, you need to sign us off now. All right. We appreciate you listening. Come back anytime. We've got four on Tuesday night. And uh, join us on and Matt and all the other great things on Florida Radio. There you go. All right. Thanks, Wade. So long for now, y'all. Thank you. Georgia Radio. On your phone. In your home. Everywhere you go.